Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a pretty cool feature that will be coming, hopefully, that will be coming to Blender 2.93. Currently, this is within the experimental, experimental branch of the Sculpt Room and it's actually something that Pablo teased. So, for you to actually follow along with this, you need to go over to Blender.org and right here, you need to go over to the download section and scroll all the way down to where you get the experimental. Now you kind of think that, okay, this is where you get it. No, you have to actually click on experimental branch and within the experimental branch, you would find the sculpting development branch right here. So with this here, we're gonna go back into Blender and take a look at what this feature is. So by simply subdividing this by three, by hitting control and three on your keyboard, you get the subdivision level of that. Go over to where you have your modifiers. Actually, let's drop this by two and then I will set this to simple and apply. So with this now, what we can do is go over to where we have our sculpting mode and right here, let's actually take a look at what our wireframe looks like. So click on this button, which is your overlay button and turn on the wireframe. So with the wireframe right here, what we need to do is to actually um, go through and add a face set. So if you go ahead and stretch this all the way out, First of all, you'd notice that you have a couple of buttons which don't have icons yet, as these things are still in development. And you also notice that we have a couple more right here. Let's go ahead and add a couple of face sets. And to do that, we'll go over to our box face set, you know, button, click on that. And then we add one face set right there, another face set right over here, and one right over there. Now, once we have this done, move these over, you know, however you choose. And then once you scroll all the way down, you would notice that we have the face set edit or the edit face set. Now, if you click on this button, by default, you already know that we have the grow face set and also the shrink face set. But if you click on it right now, you would notice that you have even way more. So let's actually shrink this back one step. And with that done, we would also go back here and you notice that we have the delete geometry, which can now easily delete geometries like this. And this is, this is pretty cool. I mean, it looks really nice. And then we can go through and do the fairing position, fairing tangency. So you could actually go ahead and play with a few component and also all tangency, but the extrude actually makes sense. So what he did show off is right now, if you have the extrude selected, you can now extrude several parts, right? So you can now do extrusions like this and you can also do extrusions like that. So one thing to keep in mind is once you start doing this, you are automatically creating another face set. And I think this is pretty cool. And if you go over to your tool section, you'll notice that there's literally nothing new. You still have exactly the same set of menus that you have here and we can go in and do some more stuff. So let's say we bring this one a little bit down and then we can also, you know, move this a little bit upwards and we can do something like this. So I can see a situation where lots of people will create some very interesting things by simply using this and you can move these things back and forth. I really like the fact that you, you know, you have this chance of moving these things back and forth, but it is actually something with ZBrush that looks more like this that I would also love to see. And what am I talking about? If we simply dive over and take a look at ZBrush, so let's go ahead and fire up ZBrush. So with ZBrush open right here, what we can do is go over to Lightbox and then we will select the cube, okay? So we get this cube right here, go all the way to where we have our geometry, maybe drop this one by two, delete the lower subdivision, and let's turn on wireframe to see what we have. And with this, we can go over to where we have make polymesh 3D. And now if we hold on control on the keyboard, click and drag and select the particular section, hit control and W on the keyboard to create the polygroup. So polygroup is what you know as face set in Blender. So the next thing which we need to do is also do the same thing right here and hit control and W on the keyboard. And maybe I'm just gonna do this one as well, control and W. All right, so maybe we should actually, you know, catch up with all these ones, Control and W, and uh, probably we can, let's just leave this as it is. Oh, we see some problems. Now, the reason why you get things like this, especially if you're working in ZBrush, is because you have perspective turned on. So I'm just gonna turn that off, make another selection, have that there, make another selection like so, have that one right there, maybe have this one and finally we're just gonna you know select all of this and hit control and w so we have all of these face sets or you know aka polygroups so how do you work with this so if you go over to your brush palette in zbrush and then you go over to your z modeler 
which is uh, which you can activate by pressing B Z M you would notice that you have this so one thing with ZBrush is if you right click you can actually choose to do that same extrusion across different points now this is where you know it makes sense for me with ZBrush because at this point I can do this for just one particular you know stuff and then if I would like this to happen within the entire poly loop I can right click go over to the Q mesh or simply go over to where you have us extrude and then you can go over to your poly loop now with this you can do a lot of things you can say you want this to happen on one side or you can say you want it to happen on various sides so at this point you can do something like that and we can also do something like this and for example if you like this to just happen across the entire thing you know you don't want it to just be within the poly loop go over to where you have your poly group island and with your poly group island you can get this thing happening now this optional stuff that you get or all of these options that you have here they are one of those things that i would really love to see come over to blender another thing which i like to see come over to blender is is this that at any point you know we talked about this one when the masking tools came and it's very cool to see that Pablo implemented that so it would be very cool to also see this one so for example if you like to extrude things within a given you know point or towards a given direction you notice that there's a tiny line that actually indicates that so if i'm doing this let's actually go back and take a look so if i'm doing this within this direction and do it you notice that we get that and if i'm doing this within this direction okay you notice it goes inwards if i'm doing it within this direction it goes outwards and the same thing applies to you know different points another thing which would make sense is if it's also going to be possible for you to just simply paint your uh face set okay so maybe if you want to paint your face set it might just be cool so you can do that easily for example in zbrush if you hold down alt you can also just go in and paint your face set on individual polyframes like so. I think this might also be a very cool feature to see. Now, these are like the things which exist in ZBrush that I would love to see come over to Blender, especially with a tool set like that. Contrary to what we have here in Blender, which is this, that you, know, you are only restricted to moving these based off your mouse. So like you want to move it upwards, you want to move it outwards of course this makes sense but it would be pretty cool to see you know that directional stuff happening here so this is more like it and of course i'm very excited to see that there is this thing that is here so for those who like to test this one out or maybe you want to experiment with any of these tools that is here for example the ip mask filter which seems to be pretty nice i haven't actually played with this one yet but i think it is going to be a feature like this so if i throw in that subdivision thingy Ooh, this looks good so if i try in that subdivision thingy i think what we will be able to get so let's actually go in and turn this off so i think what we'll be able to get is is this so if we do the same sculpt expand feature thingy which is holding down shift and tapping a on your keyboard you know we get this thing and we already talked about this previously so if we do something like this I think what this can do is maybe it can help you invert stuff. So let's actually go ahead and check it. Yep. So you can invert things, but I guess this inversion has to do with you clicking and dragging. So at this point, you can invert base of uh, your face set. Okay. That looks interesting. So, and you can also do some addition and also some subtraction. And this looks pretty cool. So I think something else which also makes sense is you could also make this not to be face set oriented. And I guess the way to do that, so let's also go ahead and clear our mask. So I think another way to do this is uh, if you hold down shift and tap A on your keyboard and do something like this. If you go over to where you have your tools and go over to your options, I guess you can turn this off. So once you turn this off, uh, it should actually happen across. Okay, so this is uh, this is why it was happening like that earlier. So if we go over to the invert right now and do this inversion, this makes sense. All right. So these are some of the tools that exist. We've already talked about the masking by color before. The you know the color filter has been there before. There is also the scene projection. We made mention of that before. We've also talked about the fairing, smearing, and also paint. So in case you want to see all of that, there are a couple of videos on the channel you can go through and take a look at that. And uh, this for me looks pretty, pretty nice. This is more like it. And for sure, I'd like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And for anyone who wants to play with this, you can simply go over 
So the link in the description that will take you over to this place where you can take a look at the experimental branches that are tailored down to one specific or a specific branch of Blender and you can go through and start, you know, having fun with it. Tell me what you guys think about this one. And of course, if you like the video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.